What's up you guys? Welcome back to MJ Views. Today <laughs> I have a special guest. This is Champion Nala's big baby. He's actually six months or seven months, but he's huge. He's bigger than Rocket. He's here in this video, or he doesn't want to be in my video actually. He's actually our guest here today because we're doing a video revolved around him. Lately, he's been going to the restroom inside the house. So I left him here with me to basically potty train him. And I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to show you the French babies, the Frenchy babies, and teaching you how to potty train your dog. A lot of you have been asking me how to potty train puppies because I can see how it could be a little bit of a task to do. Um, if you don't have that much of experience with dogs, maybe it's your first dog or something. So I'm going to use Champ here as my test subject to help guide you guys into potty training your puppies. I think it's better seeing it firsthand with a dog that's not really potty trained rather than just me telling you guys how to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the video. This is actually Kiara, now that we're talking about the French Bulldog puppies. Um, she was in my latest video, but she is Champ sister. So basically, both these Frenchies are Nala's babies. Um, I also made a video about that. But they're my brother's dogs, so they kept two of her babies out of the six that she had. Um, so that's just a little recap. I have her here because they were just making too much noise playing with each other. So I want to start off by saying that Champ is already a pretty smart dog. You know, he knows how to sit, lay down. He knows the basic commands and all that stuff. But with him, I do want to start teaching him a little bit more other commands, kind of like knowing his name, coming when called, and looking at me. Sit. Good boy. What I'm doing is basically just Champ. Good boy. That's teaching him how to listen. When he listens, he gets a treat. Champ. Good boy. So you see how he's designating different sounds. Before, you would call his name and he'd just like look around like that. You'd be like, okay. But now, Champ. Good boy. So once they know their name and they're good with coming when called, so you can see when they're looking at the tree, you see him looking at the tree. What I'm gonna do is put my hand here. They have to look at my nose, but they're looking at like my finger. Look at me. When they look at this, you have to like move it at the same time you say it, look at me and they'll look at it. Then you'll give them the treat. Champ. So I'm glad that he's doing that now. He used to not even come when called. So you're doing a good job. So look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Much later. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Champ. Look at me. Much, much, much later. Look at me. Good boy. So right when he looks at you. It might take a couple tries. This is actually the first time I'm teaching him. Look at me. Good boy. That's a good boy. So basically you want to do that until you don't have to put your finger up here anymore. You just say, look at me, and they'll do it, and then you'll tell them what you need to tell them. I feel like it just helps them listen to you more, basically. In this case, it would be really good to either have um, one of my nephews teach them the trick as well so that Champ can learn how to listen to them as well. I've noticed that Champ, if you talk to him, he doesn't really understand what's going on. He doesn't really listen to your words coming out of your mouth or try to comprehend anything that is being said because they try to call him to go outside and he doesn't go outside or, you know, he'll run away and all that stuff. Those tricks will teach him to listen. Um, so that's what he needs. When I say let's go outside, my dog's ears perk up right away because they're like, oh, we need to go outside, you know? They need to be able to listen to something like that so they know what's going on around them. So furthering into that, I feel like this also prevents accidents from happening. You know, you might see your dog sniffing somewhere and if they know how to listen to you, then you can say, let's go outside and then run outside. I feel like that could prevent accidents from happening because it just basically lets your dog be aware of what you're saying and listening to you. If they don't know how to do this, then you saying, you calling out to them won't even matter because they won't look at you 
or listen to what you're saying. So the second thing I want to go over is actually making a schedule for your dog. Depending on the age of your dog depends on how often you have to take them out. The younger they are, the more frequently they're going to have to go to the restroom. And of course, the older they are, the more they can hold it. But I still don't prefer to test those limits. I take my dogs out at least every like four hours, but they're already like full grown. So my rule of thumb is cutting the time of their months in half, not going over six hours either. So let's say they're six months, cut that in half is three hours um, that they could hold their bladder for. That's just like a rough estimate as well, but you should always have a schedule, you know, dogs get used to your schedule. So what I usually do is take them out in the morning, really early in the morning, take them out every two to three hours throughout the day, and then take them out one last time before they go to bed, um, just so they don't go to sleep um, with the full bladder and they end up I don't know, doing accidents in their crate or around your house or anything. And then speaking about that, you should also not feed them too late at night because again, they're going to go to sleep with a full bladder and that's when accidents happen. Or also don't feed them when you know you're going to be out of the house. Um, try to feed them a little bit earlier and have time for them to go to the restroom before you actually head out because then again, you can find accidents when you come back and that's something that you all don't want. So the third thing that I want to do is actually give them a word to go to the restroom. What I usually do is let's go outside and then they know that we're going to go outside. And then when they're actually outside, it's either they're going to do two things. They're going to play or they're going to go potty. So I actually have words to distinguish the two and one is play, like go play or one is go potty, you know, or I say go pee, but you could do whatever. Go pee. Wow, good progress right there. Rocket, go pee. Go pee, Rocket. Good boy, champ. That's a good boy. That's a good boy, champ. <laughs> you didn't do anything. She's not potty trained. <laughs> so this is the area that I choose to bring them at. This is always their designated like potty space. It's better to have a designated spot so that they can get used to going in a certain spot. Go pee. Champ, go pee. Good girl. That's a good girl. That's a good girl, Kiara. That's a good girl. Let's go potty. Let's go potty. Let's go potty. Go go potty. Good girl. Let's go inside. You have to say it enough so they get to know what to do when you say those words. And of course, do the action when you say those words. So when I tell them to go potty, I usually point at the ground or I have them walk around um, the potty area so that they actually go potty. And when they actually do go potty, um, I praise them. So another thing that I'm going to be doing is keeping him in an area that I can supervise him. So if you have a doggy door, that's going to be perfect. Um, so you could just leave them, you know, in a little gated cage or something and have them access to the doggy door. So if he goes outside, he can just go on his own. Most likely if they're not potty trained at all, they won't even go outside. They'll just go in their area. But the reason why I'm doing this is because you can have them close by and supervise them at all times. So if you see that he's smelling or anything you could be like let's go outside let's go outside and just rush him outside really quick unlike if you have him let's say roaming the house and you're in your room and they're maybe in the kitchen you can't really see what he's doing all the way over there so just have him close by so you can supervise him and see you know get to know when he needs to go to the restroom sometimes dogs will cry or scratch at you or whine or maybe they'll just sniff around and they won't really do any like verbal cues so you just kind of have to look out for that this will happen gradually over time of course jeff i could already see that his way of going to the restroom is literally just waiting at the door like he doesn't give me any verbal cues or physical cues like he's just at the door um like get me out you know waiting at the door so basically i keep him in this room and Throughout the day, I'm either working in this room, it's an office, so I'm doing my work in there and everything. But for most of the time, I can see him 
So when he's standing at the door, I'm assuming he needs to go to the restroom or something. And I go ahead and just let him out. So once he gets used to a tiny little space, you can then progress him like I did in a closed space still, which is my room. I let him in my room. So I let him in here once I thought he was kind of moving up in the stages of being potty trained. And that says a lot because I have a carpet in my room and I... At first I would not let him in my room at all, I'd close my door because I know that there would be an accident. But what I did next was keep him in my room with the door closed so he can't escape me and go potty, let's say in the kitchen when I'm not looking. So I guess the whole point of this is trying to figure out what's their way of telling you that they need to go to the restroom. Um, and then just responding to that way and then praising them and all that stuff. So another thing that I also want to say is that if you have dogs, they're gonna learn quicker. They also left them here with me because my dogs are trained, or at least potty trained. When I take them outside, they're gonna go potty when I tell them to. So when they do that, Champ is going to see that, oh, they're going to the restroom when she's saying these words, and they are getting praised for it, so might as well, you know? Um, and he's been doing that. Just let them follow their lead and they'll be potty trained in no time. So I do want to go over one last thing and that's the crate training. Crate training I think is very very important to do with your dog. You all would kind of mention how I would crate train like to potty train my younger puppies. And I basically do that just to get them used to a certain area. They're small enough to think that's like a potty area. You know, the bigger that they get, they're not going to want to go in their crate because their crate should be a safe space where they can lay down, you know, play with their toys and just relax. When I would use it with my younger puppies is just to get them to learn how to use a puppy pad and when they're older they're not going to want to do that anymore so that's when you introduce them to the outside or maybe you'll want to introduce them to the puppy pad but i don't recommend puppy pads just because i feel like it shows them how to go to the restroom like on carpets or like just like little mats like that so i don't like it i just use it when we have litters because it's easier to clean up. I mean, they do learn where to go to the restroom. So I use that when they're little tiny puppies. When they reach two months, I start training them to go potty in a different area, more bigger. And that's especially because they can hold their bladder for a little bit longer. So crate training is very easy to do if you do it early on. Usually I just leave them in there with a bone and that about does it. They'll just love being in there because they know that good things happen when they go to their crate. Like they'll get, you'll give them a bone when they go to their crate and they want to chew on their bone, right? And that's basically what I do. Usually you crate train because you want to leave the house and you don't want to leave your dogs roaming around. The crate allows us time for them to adjust to their potty schedule. Once they get comfortable right in their crate, you know, and you leave them there at night or during the day when you're not home, they're not gonna go potty until you get home because they're not gonna wanna go potty in their crate. So that's gonna prevent from accidents happening as well when you're out of the house because accidents are going to happen at first. And it's gonna be normal because they're just getting used to their, you know, their new environment. If you have them in the crate, that's gonna also be very easy to see signs that they need to go out. So at first, I wouldn't just lock them in their crate. I would get them used to it. And of course, they're gonna start crying, you know? But the difference here is that they're gonna be used to being in their crate. They're gonna be relaxed in there, playing with their toys. And then if they start crying, that's when you know that they need to get out for a certain reason. So that's why I keep emphasizing that they have to be comfortable in their crate because then they're just gonna keep on crying if they're not comfortable and you can't really tell the difference whether they have to go to the restroom or not. I hope this video wasn't too confusing and I'm trying to put in like little clips of me training him as well so I can like show you visuals of how to do it. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video with Champy here. He's a really good boy. He's been doing really good. And I feel like just within time, dogs naturally become potty trained because like I said, they get used to your schedule. So as long as you take them outside to go to the restroom, they're gonna learn, okay, outside is to go to the restroom. So just be patient. Patience is key to dog training. Nothing happens overnight. But yeah, besides that, of course, leave any comments down below if you have any questions. And if I missed something, of course, let me know as well. If you have more questions, I'll go ahead and answer them in the comments down below as soon as possible and as best as I can because I know it's kind of hard to make like a certain video of steps like do this and do that. 
because all dogs are different your schedules are different i'm just doing like a general how dogs are and how they learn so just leave me your scenario down below and i'll try to get to you guys as soon as i can and help you guys out so that you don't have any more accidents in your house. But besides that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Of course, head over to my channel and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And if you do want to see more videos like this or enjoyed this one, click a like. But besides that, thank you guys so much for watching once again. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!